you know, I always viewed myself like as a very Pan-African woman, a very okay. Pan-African person, very prideful in that Pan-Africanism ideal and blackness. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I got to Ghana that someone called me a white person wow. for the first time. And I was like, a what? What you they know? call you, a Bruni? A Bruni, <laughs> you know, or like, just even confronting that identity politics for the first mm. time where for so long you've had this identity crisis of trying to figure out where you fit in and where you're from and who you are and then you get to the continent of Africa and you're like my brother and they're like I don't know you <laughs> I do not know you and in fact not only do I not know you it's two times the price right. so that was happening to me few and far between it wasn't right. like you know, anything. But enough to, yeah. for you to come face to face with yeah. yourself in a different way. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I think 95% of the people who I've met embrace me. Mm -hmm. I think 95% of the people who I've met really understand the connection in the diaspora and want to link and want to build and want to be united. Mm -hmm. They're like-minded individuals. That's why I mess with them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's why they mess with me. But in terms of that small 5%, it's enough. And it's like, it's in the most weird of moments. You know, where you're like in the market and you're just, oh, I'm gonna get some papaya, auntie, how are you? And then they're like, you know, who are you? <laughs>